Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome, everybody. Hey, Art, nice face mask. Hey, John. Yeah, and it's a good thing that we're protecting uh, ourselves because we're so close. I only see a couple of <laughs> inches between you and I on the screen. That's right. Anything could happen with, with these few inches. Whoop, wrong side. These few inches. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to show you, uh, by the way, that's the standard N95 mask, Which, right? Which, by the way, I, I want everybody to know I didn't go out and buy them. But I've had them in the garage for about 10 years from a uh, sanding project that they did. And uh, sure. who they, knows why I'm I picked at them Home up. Depot, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I've, that's how I found my N95 mask was in the garage ah. right, from another project. But I wanted to show you these because these are very creative. And they're made by my a friend of my daughter's. And the lady who makes these just styled them you know, to go up over your nose. They've got the uh, elastic on the side to go behind your ears. That She's made a bunch for kids. So this is, can you see the pattern? That's a baseball right. uh, pattern. She's got one, if you're for her skateboarding kids, the skull cool. pattern. They'll wear them. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's my for grand, the kids my, wear them. My grandson would wear that in a heartbeat. Yeah. Here's one she made for adults. I think uh, my wife would like this one. This is a this is doggy, cute dogs and stuff. And uh, and here's just a generic, uh, generic blue, I don't know what, polka dot pattern. But they're all, you know, they're all so well made. Um, they've got a lining inside and they're all stitched. They're very nice. She's not making money. She's making them for her friends. Mm -hmm. And then my daughter's mother-in-law uh, is making the uh, classic... Uh, flat kind that uh, surgical people wear. You know, they they expand they expand like that. So you you put it up over your face and you pull it when you pull it tight, it expands down under your chin like that. So right, and and all, I of, just, all of these are really not so much to protect you from anything as to protect other people in case you have a cough or a sneeze or you're around well, they, with other people who are sneezing and and maybe it will capture that before it gets airborne. Sure, but they do both. Yeah. They, they protect you and they protect other people from you. And that's the whole point of the the uh, isolation and the stay at home and the separation and all of that stuff. It's, it's pretty standard procedure for any kind of an epidemic. You try to isolate everybody so that you separate the people who are sick from the people who are not sick and you prevent it spreading. It's, it's a standard. It goes back hundreds of years people did this. But... I just love the creativity of people making their own masks. I think it's a great. <coughs> oh, a handkerchief. <laughs> okay. And that, Thank God those, you have a handkerchief. Those are great for people who can sew. But if not, people yes. are wearing bandanas and, and masks. But right. uh, my wife made out of this, the Surgeon General was showing a, uh, on TV how to make a simple mask with rubber bands so you don't have to know how to sew and these are all over the internet as well so yeah good That's uh, great. here's another version of the the same kind of thing so uh, i'm glad i'm glad that because uh, i know that you make sojourns we, we ride around the car every so often to drop a piece of mail in a mailbox someplace just to see what's going on or not going on in the world but uh, what? what? You get out and you touch a strange mailbox? I don't oh, touch no. it. No, the slot. It's a drive-by. <laughs> Simply a drive-by. So, but thank you for uh, being concerned about turning me in. I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> but in any event, so I'm glad that you're wearing masks now because I know for a while you weren't. Uh, well, I only wear them to the store or when I go out for but something. We don't, don't wear, wear them around here. There's no need to, you know. I thought it was a style uh, uh, fashion statement for you. Oh. Well, no, I, you know, these things aren't fun to wear. Um, I mean, they're not bad, but I wouldn't want to wear it 24 hours a day like the nurses and the doctors oh, have to wear. Just know? just holding it up and breathing through it, you get warm and, you know, if they're really pinched in and so on and so forth. We've seen some of those first responders 
who have their masks off who are just exhausted and the, sure. their, their whole faces are all, you know, scraped up from being the whole day. So, yep. But in any event, yep. these are really great. And so um, uh, they're not for sale, but if they were for sale, how much would you take for them, John? Well, what do you pay for the N95 when we bought them three years ago for construction purposes? You could buy a package of three or four for about five bucks, right? Yeah. But these are handmade. If I get a commission, I want to sell them for five bucks each. Okay. <laughs> All right. But so anyway, listen. There's there's a uh, uh, there's a, a negative that's been going around that I want to address, and and the negative is that um, all of a sudden people are starting to talk about the fact that we really don't, since we don't know much about the COVID-19 virus to begin with, and we're learning stuff every week, one of the questions that has come up is, will this stuff come back to haunt us with a round two, you know, in, I don't know, September or maybe next December? And nobody knows the answer to that, and they're trying to study it. So I, I thought, you know, that's a, probably a good thing that we're discussing that, because we don't know whether if we stop our isolation techniques or whatever, what are we calling it? The stay at home stuff. Yeah, well, yeah. If we, if we go back to quote normal business um, in a few weeks or in a month or so, will it come back? And will we have to go back through this same process again? Nobody well, knows the answer to well, that. But I think, I think there are some things that um, are relatively uh, either, if not known, we can assume, for instance, this whole thing with uh, the stay at home, or shelter in place, whatever you want to call it, this right. self quarantining, is that not so much to prevent people from eventually getting uh, COVID nineteen, but to keep the availability of hospital space available, so that it doesn't get so overwhelmed, so that the next, right. let's say you and I go out and we eventually get exposed to it and, and get it, we will not be turned away from a hospital because they don't have. Uh, ICUs or whatever kind of right. places. So that's the first thing. Yeah, but they the, they called it they called it uh, lowering the curve. Is that right? Do uh, I have that right? Uh, yeah, flattening the curve, lowering the flattening curve. the curve. Yeah, right. yeah, Just, sure. And you're right. That but that's that slows the spread of it. Right, but there's so also it, but there's also a question, it's manageable. But there's also the question is, uh, will this like other flus and other types of things? have a herd mentality that once you get it, you can't be infected again. They presume so. And I think right. a lot of the reopening of businesses will depend upon that being a, a, a fact that people who get it, like doctors who've gotten and now go back to work in the, uh, the same ICU units uh, 14 sure. days later, those that have survived it don't seem to be catching it again. So that's a good thing. But how long yeah. will it take until, what, 60 or 70 percent of the people have this herd uh, immunity uh, right. uh, for it to be effective so that we stop worrying about it. And also, uh, as you've told me many times about vaccines. All right. It's well, we don't, th th there's a lot we still don't know. They're working very hard. And I'm, I have to tell you, I am uh, very positively impressed by all the progress that's being made right. so very quickly. You know, this is, what was that, um, that phrase about, Technology doubles every. Oh, you Moore's, know, the, Moore's law with. Uh, Moore, thank you. Yeah, it, it doubles every on a chip, years. on a chip. The the uh, the amount of uh, uh, computing power on a chip doubles. Yeah. Uh, it doubles every year or every two years. But it's then, ex exponentially. Right. Yeah. Yes, and and I think that's what's happening with our uh, scientific community, research community. There, there. You know, all our resources are going into this. Uh, and we are making progress exponentially. So we're not where we'd like to be. I, I'd like to be able to get a va vaccine and then go out and uh, into the big city and walk in crowds. But we're not there yet. I think we will be very soon, quite yeah, frankly. Also, just in, in that vein a little bit, I think also what I'm hoping we'll see sooner rather than later, because I think a vaccine might be a year, a year and a half away, is to get a more effective treatment for it. So that if you do get it, it will, let's say, uh, lessen the uh, the ability of your lungs to retain water or all the other things that actually wind up actually uh, uh, causing morbidity. So uh, I, right. I agree. I think that there's a better approach to it right now, and it can't come soon enough. Right. And there's another good sign on the horizon. And, of course, we don't know. Again, 
we're taking it week by week. Um, we don't know how permanent this sign is, but the sign is, and how do I put this into a negative? The sign is, the good sign is that the modeling that they had been relying on to project how many deaths there would be and therefore how many beds they would need, how many ventilators, that modeling turns out to not have been too accurate. Well, probably for a lot of good reasons, because they didn't have enough information. Right. But now as we move forward, they're modeling, they're changing their modeling every week. And so their projections of how many dead they can expect are lower every week because of the modeling. Now that not necessarily lowering because we have less dead or less cases, but the modeling, which is as accurate as they can make it, is changing and it's changing to to update with what we know and the the modeling numbers are getting lower and lower and in fact um there are places that have called for i i, I gotta make up the numbers a thousand beds we're gonna need a thousand beds now they turn around and they say well we probably don't we had, not only is your modeling different but we've had less people walking in with the symptoms we don't need a thousand beds we need a hundred beds but John, that kind I, of thing i think i think also uh uh, the modeling initially was just counting raw numbers of what's happening to people without sheltering in place, without the quarantining. And Correct. now that <clears throat> that's clicked in, particularly uh, California started very early, and apparently they have way below any reasonable numbers they might have expected because they went on uh, quarantine for, for San Francisco, then uh, L.A., and now the whole state. And they were able to get ahead of the curve before, let's say, New York, which is very aggressive. But had they started a week or two earlier, it might have been different. So I think that the what's happening now is that more people are adopting these quarantining and those kind of things that that they're not as overwhelmed. Because quite right. frankly, had they all been overwhelmed, the hospitals never would have been able to handle it. And they would have just said, you know what? We can't even admit you because you've got so little chance of surviving. Now at least they can give it a shot. So yeah, I, yeah. I agree with they, you. They have, it's all it's I know all in that the world. They have been, I know that they have been changing their modeling as they get more information. Right. So they have been more recently, including the 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 statistics of the stay at home and how that's affected everything. But the point the point is that modeling is only modeling. You know, it's not perfect. It's a computer projection and it can never be perfect. It doesn't match reality. It's always got to be a step behind reality. And it would appear, and this is why I'm very positive, it would appear that the reality is that the cases are considerably less than everybody expected. Now, that doesn't mean that in some locations, maybe New York City, maybe Los Angeles or San Francisco, that, the, that we've peaked or that we're leveling off. But it does mean that it's a it's a good sign that we're it's not as bad as we thought. So we still have to be diligent. Still have to, still have to be careful. Still have to wear our masks. And I'm gonna I'm gonna pick this skateboarding mask with the skulls on it, the shredding. Well, and I, I do thank you for that. Uh, but I'm sheltered in place, so uh, who would want to hide this face? <laughs> but just just to be uh, uh, continue to be serious. We're just lay people like everybody else, and these are impressions that we have. It's not right. that, even though we are we appear to be really brilliant. It really isn't Dr. John and Dr. Art. Okay, we're just two guys who are living it like everybody in our audience is for most the most part. And uh, there are some encouraging signs, some discouraging signs. But I think overall, uh, sheltering in place, we're sort of getting used to it. We are fortunate that um, we've got people to help shop for us and and watch out for us. So we haven't had to expose ourselves that much. And I think that yeah. the more people can do that, uh, the better off they are. Good, good for you. And uh, and I just want to agree with you that we're not uh, we're not doctors. We play them on Skype, but we're not <laughs> doctors. And all those books on the shelf behind me. I know they look like medical books, but they're really multiple copies of Debbie Does Dallas. So that's good. On that note, okay, I'll let you go. I'll let you go to back say, to your. I'll let you go back to your research. So it's time to say goodbye. <laughs> yeah, I think, goodbye. think I think we're about thirty seconds beyond saying goodbye. <laughs>
it, it, instead of instead of using this as a mask, I'm going to use it as a gag. <laughs> Say goodbye, Johnny. Goodbye. Goodbye, Johnny. Okay, great. And see you all for the, the next chapter of the Founders Log, Health and What We Know and Don't Know. Enjoy. Be safe. Be healthy. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.